Working versions of Class's new Axion 800 series are just driving in the country and we've managed to get hold of one of the first ones to get our hands on it and try it out against, well what better than its predecessor, the old Axion 800. Now they're both around the same horsepower, it's about 260 give or take, but the old one relied on a PTO and transport boost to get it there, whereas the new one has no boost, what you see is what you get. On the old Axion, it was a deer motor that provided the muscle, and that used exhaust gas recirculation to make it green and lean. Whereas the new Beak has got a Fiat engine. Now it's simpler, but you also have to factor in our blue when it comes to topping up. Now the new one certainly looks a bigger lump, and that's not helped by the test tractor having bigger tyres than the old one. But in fact, it weighs almost a tonne and a quarter heavier. Now, class say it's more fuel efficient. We haven't had a chance to test that but a tonne and quarter heavier, that would be quite some achievement if it burns less fuel too. They've really thought about making this a driver's machine, so there's an easily accessible fuel filter here with water bowl. That, that's really nice, it's just a shame they couldn't have put a bit of plastic cowling here to stop it getting caked in mud. The other real nice feature is a proper slide out, lockable toolbox. Now the big changes from the driver's perspective really happen in the cab and uh, that starts with the dash which now all swings down to make it far easier to get in. The most obvious change in here really is the armrest with this Seabus hand sticker at the centre of it. Now one small thing that can make a tractor driver's life far easier is the shuttle and a park position. So many manufacturers are so nervous about putting one on there and only Valtra really does it right. But nonetheless, classes it isn't too bad. It's far easier than reaching down to pull a hand stick. Although mechanically there's not anything majorly different about the, the pair's transmissions, there is a difference in how they feel. Now we've spent quite a lot of time on the roads tankering and hauling 16 ton trailers full of mud. And um, we've set the um, hexa shift into auto just to see how it responds on the road. And the new one is far smoother and the gear changes are far snappier. Now generally the new cab's a pretty nice place to be. I mean, everyone's got an opinion on whether four posts or six posts are better. The old one was a six poster, the new one's back to four. Now aside from all the cow muck, it's only when you hop between the two that the old one really starts to show its age. The armrest's a far simpler affair and power shift changes are controlled by a thumb flicker rather than the Stormtrooper's helmet in the new one. Now you can probably tell just as we're driving along by the shape of the camera that the gear switch, the gear changes are far harsher. Now that's, some of that might just be down to age and this tractor's probably had a bit, a bit of a hard life over its 2,000 hours. But um, there's certainly something to be said for the new one in that department. Now quite often when we do these tests, we tend to favour the, the older tractor because manufacturers get too carried away with chucking on loads of electronics and complication into the screen. But it's not the case here and there's very little to dis dislike about the new tractor. Yeah, it's smooth and really nice to drive actually in comparison to the old one, Real, really precise on the road at 50k. Um, not sure whether it's bug-eyed or boss-eyed. They're both pretty ugly, in all honesty, aren't they? Not that that matters. And um, the truth will be in how reliable this is in five years' time.